Get rid of career clutter. Another form of clutter that you really need to get out from under involves what you do for a living. If you're like the typical American, chances are you're not all that happy with your job. Welcome to the club. Most people that I've spoken to in researching this training actually hate what they do for a living. I'm not talking about a slight discomfort here or there or some generalized resentment. They actively hate it. If given a chance, they would do something else. In fact, a lot of people say that they would do it at the drop of a hat. They might even take a pay cut. That's how strong their discomfort is with the things that they do for a living. Believe me, this is really a big source of clutter. If you go to a job that feels like daily humiliation, what effect do you think that would have on the rest of your life? It's not going to remain hermetically sealed. It's not like you kind of enter this super sanitized antiseptic chamber for eight hours and then you get out of it to enjoy the rest of your life. It's not like what you do in those eight hours in your mental state before, during, and after those eight hours will not have an effect on the rest of your life. It obviously does. A lot of family abuse actually arises from this. For example, a father is unhappy with his career. Don't be surprised when he's not a very forgiving person as far as his kids or his wife are concerned. The same applies to the mom and the kids. They're not happy with school. That's going to produce turbulence across the board. It may impact their relationship with their parents. So how do you get rid of career clutter? How do you work around this sense of animosity, fear, or ambivalence you have about the things that you have to do to put food on the table? Here are just some suggestions. Again, I'm not cramming an answer down your throat. You just have to pick and choose among these. Tweak them for them to make sense to your particular situation. Choose to love what you do. The first thing you can do is to go to work with the clear objective of loving what you do. You know what you normally feel about your job. This is not a mystery. But starting at a certain date, I want you to consciously find the enjoyment, meaning, and value in what you do. Savor it. Celebrate it. Embrace it. Allow yourself to feel good about the things that you do. Believe it or not, finding passion in what you're currently doing for a living is actually easier than you think. How am I so confident? Well, let's put it this way. If your job is such a complete and total waste of time, you probably would have found an excuse to quit your job earlier. If it really burns you or if it really is such a black hole in your life, you would have found the will and the strength to quit your job earlier. You would have been able to do that, but you're still there. I discovered this when I worked for an insurance company and I had this friend who walked in and he would just bitch about his job all day every day. As he was shuffling the papers, seeing the clients, looking through the manuals and procedure books, he would just complain all day, every day. Well, sure enough, the company went through a reorganization and there were several months where supervisors as well as management staff were actively evaluating everybody in terms of termination or early retirement. What do you think my friend's reaction was? That's not what you think. If he really hated this job, he would have been excited about the possibility that he may get retrenched because it comes with a nice, fat, lump sum, as well as retirement benefits. After all, he's been working there for at least 20 years. Instead, he was scared stiff. During those months, it dawned on him that as annoyed as he was about certain aspects of his job, by and large, he loved his job. It was one of those massive personal realizations. But of course, when he shared this with me, he wasn't exactly emotionally honest about it. Because, hey, let's face it, if you've been bitching about your job for several months or even years to your friends, and then all of a sudden you come back with a total 180-degree different view of your work, you'd look like a fool. But reading between the lines, I knew this happened. It dawned on him that his job wasn't as bad as he thought it was. Soon enough, I started seeing Paul smile at work more often. In fact, he would often whistle. He didn't get retrenched, but the possibility of being let go finally woke him up to what exactly made him show up to work for well past 20 years. If you were in a job that you feel is a dead end, sucks up your soul, or otherwise feels corrosive, I want you to stop and think about what activities you engage in at work that keep you coming back. Like I said, finding passion in what you're doing is easier than you think. At least one activity gives you enough passion to want to come to work day after day, week after week, month after month. Find that. It may have something to do with autonomy. It may have something to do with the subject matter you're engaged with. It may have something to do with the people you work with. It doesn't really matter. Find passion in what you're doing. 
If this doesn't work for you, the next technique that I know works involves gamification. This is just a fancy word for trying to turn certain elements of your job into a game. Maybe you can look at different processes that you do and try to tie some sort of achievement at the completion of a process. Maybe you work in an office where you can easily compare your performance with other people. In that situation, you can create a leaderboard. There are really no prizes here, but by looking at your job as some sort of giant video game, you can see yourself start at a level and move up. You can find yourself going from milestone to milestone, achievement to achievement. In other words, you start looking at it differently. It no longer seems like some hazy mishmash of pointless activities that don't really lead you anywhere. Instead, you see a nice linear progression, and if you treat your job as a big enough video game with a heavy focus on unlocking more and more achievements and racking up more points, you might be shocked to discover that your boss would love to promote you more often. You might be pleasantly surprised by how much more money you'll be making. How does this work? Well, it's actually quite simple. You have to understand that the amount of money you're making at work is really the price tag your boss or the powers that be puts on the value of your work. Of course, this is discounted by their profit margin, overhead, and other factors. Still, it's an assessment of how much value you bring to the table. If you apply gamification techniques to your work activities so you become more productive, your work quality goes up, and you are able to handle more difficult tasks, the value of your work increases. What do you think happens then? For quite some time, your boss will be enjoying a bargain because the total value of your output is so much bigger than the amount of money they're paying you. But since the labor market is still a market, your boss would be a fool to keep this disparity going for too long. Eventually, they would start ratcheting up your compensation to get a little bit closer to the actual full value of your work. Now, don't get too excited. It will never get there. But at least you will be making more than you are making now. More importantly, your standing within the company increases because people know that you are a tried and proven source of value. You're not just another face in the crowd. You're somebody who actually cares about their work. You're actually part of that core group of employees who take things to a whole other level. Another technique you can use to love what you do is to get a sideline. You can start an online business. Maybe it's an online store. Maybe you could look into dropshipping. Maybe you can even freelance on the side. Whatever the case may be, you start doing things on the side that earns an income. This has the effect of directing your attention to activities that have nothing to do with your main 9-to-5 job. A lot of the stress and negative feelings that you have about your work can stem from the fact that you just have all this idle time. After you get home from work, you start thinking about what happened at the office and you feel bad. Now, instead of doing that, you start thinking about your sideline and doing freelance work doing production work or online promotions. You don't give yourself the opportunity to keep picking over stuff that you're frustrated about. This keeps things fresh with your main 9-to-5 job. Eventually, you start looking at it with a different perspective. It's no longer as suppressive as you previously thought. Finding the courage to let go. Now, as powerful and effective as loving what you do may be, for some people, it's really not an option. They just can't find the passion in what they're doing. Gamification doesn't work, and try as they might, their sideline doesn't keep them distracted enough. They're still unhappy. In this situation, you have to find the courage to let go of your job. It's cluttering up your mind. It's just creating too much negativity in your life. It's this source of toxic thoughts that you can't shake off, regardless of how hard you try. You probably would rather consider this as your first option, but I suggest you try to love what you do first. If that isn't working, you have to come up with a game plan to let go. Don't play the game the way most other unhappy employees do. They reach a point where the straw broke the camel's back and they put in their two weeks' notice. Instead, set your resignation or retirement date at a comfortable point in the future. Ease into it. For example, you can say to yourself, Okay, I'm unhappy with this job. It's not really leading me anywhere. It's causing a lot of problems. I'm going to quit but I give myself two years or one year. Whatever the case may be, you have to give yourself a nice cushion. One practical effect of this is that you know that at some point in time, your income is going to drop because you're going to quit your job. This pushes you to plan better, so this way, whatever money you save, you can invest. You can manage your resources better. 
you're not putting yourself in a situation where the date all of a sudden appears and you just have to quit and your income drops like a rock. Then get so desperate that you find another job that is similar enough to your old job that you become miserable again. Your career tragedy repeats itself over and over again. Don't do that. Ease into it. You have to set that date. But here's the secret. Once you set that date, stick to it. That's how you make progress. Unfortunately, a lot of people try to set up false ultimatums to themselves. My friend Paul, that I described earlier, did this all the time. He'd often say to me in frustration, That's it, man. In six months, I'm going to leave. Then he would give me a date and say, Mark my words, when that date comes, I'm out of here. Sure enough, that date came and went, and he's still there. He's still bitching, still complaining, and life went on. You have to set a date when you will take that leap. When you do this, you push yourself to plan ahead. You start putting away money, creating a reserve, and most importantly, you start setting yourself up for a soft landing. Maybe you can start an online business. Maybe you can get a job search going that leads to much better work. Whatever the case may be, you use that deadline to push you into action. It's not just like some sort of mental or emotional bookmark. That's how Paul handled deadlines. That's why he didn't get far. Set a date and stick to it. Unleashing the power of passive online income. Regardless of whether you stay with your job or you are planning to transition to self-employment, you might want to consider setting up a passive online income business. This involves creating an online asset that you work really hard to build up. But the good news is you work once, but the income keeps coming. You work once and earn many times. Now don't get too excited. This doesn't mean that there's absolutely no further work involved. Such systems don't exist, believe it or not. Despite all the hype that you have heard, there's no such thing as a complete set-it-and-forget-it income system or online income machine. There's still going to be some sort of work involved, but it's not going to take up so much time like an active job. The big difference between a passive income and an active job involves having to work to earn. With active income, no work means no pay. With passive income, you can work to build up the asset, stop working, and still generate an income. That's where you need to be because when you stop working on one asset, you can build another asset and another one after that, and before you know it, the little trickles of online income add up to a nice river of revenue that can not only exceed your 9-to-5 income, but give you a tremendous amount of freedom. How come? Well, you build them up once to get them going, and you don't have to babysit them. You don't have to work to earn unless, of course, you get into freelancing which is really just like working a 9-to-5 job, but on your own terms and timeline. The core of dynamic freelancing is still similar to active income. You still have to perform work for you to get paid. You stop working, you don't get paid. Essentially, you're selling your time. With passive income, you put in the time once, and then the system produces revenue on its own. You don't have to babysit it, so you can set up other systems. If you're able to successfully set up passive online income streams, you can lead a digital nomad life. There are many bloggers out there who jump from one country to the next. They take on many different hobbies. They let the world know what they're up to with their Instagram account or their blogs. They're able to do this, of course, because of passive income. Their blogs make money through advertisements. Their Instagram accounts make money through sponsorships. You can be one of those digital nomads. I've already revealed the secret here. You should disabuse yourself of the idea that there's this one massive way to make money online. I'm sorry, but unless you are thinking of building a startup, that's just not going to happen. And usually when you build a startup, you basically trade your life for the business. Startups require a lot of time, and there's really no indication that the startup would succeed as how much time, effort, and mental energy they take. Instead, I'm talking about building up small, passive income streams, and these assets' incomes are fairly humble. You don't really make all that much. But the good news is, when you create many of them, these streams add up to quite a bit of money. This is especially true if you get into e-commerce by building your own dropshipping store. If you want to totally own your time and enjoy a tremendous amount of personal and financial freedom, look into earning from internet-based assets. For more free educational content, visit learnforfree.biz. Content produced and distributed by AllSuperInfo.